Hey everybody, my name is Adam Remmel. I am an application engineer at Ozone Engineering, and today I'm going to be giving you a brief overview into how to do a battery pack drop test. So first a little bit about impact analysis using Workbench LS Dyna. Uh, first thing is that simulating all of the physics and the ge geometry and all of its detail would be very challenging and time consuming, so some simplifications are definitely going to be needed. Uh, as you can see in the image here, I'm using a pretty simplified geometry of a battery pack. Um, the model consists of explicit dynamic simulation um, of a battery pack impacting a rigid surface. I'm going to be using ANSYS Workbench LS Dyna to set up and simulate um, this, this model. And finally, the impact analysis is going to be transferred to a submodel so that I can do a little more detailed analysis on one specific uh, region of interest within my model. So uh, some of the boundary conditions for this, the battery pack is given an initial velocity of 10 meters per second. All of the battery cells have frictionless contacts within uh, the frame and the connectors are bonded to the battery cells. And finally, my rigid surface has a fixed support applied to it. So looking at the results of this simulation, uh, you can see that the battery pack undergoes um, quite a bit of stress and deformation. The highest stress being located on the connector um, nearest to the point of impact. Uh, because battery packs are usually pretty large complex models, um, we mesh them rather coarsely initially um, but once we see this high in, this uh, region of very high stress in one specific part of the geometry, uh, submodeling becomes a good strategy for being able to isolate that part of the geometry and look at it a little bit more closely uh, without needing to mesh uh, the entire model um, much more much more finely. So to perform a submodel, um, you do need to create two different simulations. Basically, you have your global model as one simulation and your submodel as a separate simulation. And what this does is it transfers the displacements of your submodel, your region of interest, from your global model to your submodel. And then within your submodel, you can uh, mesh that region much more finely than you would in your global model, uh, as well as increase, you can include some more uh, geometric detail that you that you simplified in your global model, et cetera. Uh, you can you can link the engineering data and the geometry between these two simulations as I've done here, um, but you can't make sure not to link the model um, and anything below that. So a couple steps that you need to do in order to include a submodel. Uh, the first one is to create a name selection around your submodel boundary. Uh, so I've done this in the bottom right image. Um, so in this case, all I was interested in is this one connector. So I created a name selection on the surface of that connector. The second step is to use Ellis Dyna's uh, name selections manager um, to give that name selection a unique ID. And this is the, the image on the right side here uh, of the tree. Uh, I've created the name selections manager. And there's just two options here. The first thing is you select the named selection that you created, and then you just give that a unique number. I just gave it the number one for, um, just for simplification. Uh, and then finally, the third step is to create a keyword snippet. The snippet is pretty simple. Uh, it's just two keywords, the first one being interface component segment. Um, and this I gave the number one. Again, that corresponds to the number one that I gave the name selection in the second step. And then Finally, you, you use the keyword interface component file. And this is the file where the displacements of um, your submodel are going to be saved. So again, those displacements go from the global model, they get saved into this file. And then when we open up the submodel, we will uh, import the displacements from this file. So under the interface component file, you just put in anywhere. It doesn't matter where this, this file is or what you name it. The only thing that doesn't matter is it is important to include the, the .isfl uh, file extension type. Um, and then again, there's one more number one, again, just worth corresponding to the uh, unique user ID for your name selection. So that's it for the global model. Uh, within the sub model, there's also a couple steps you need to do. Uh, first of all, if you did link the geometry blocks in Workbench as I did, uh, you'll need to suppress all of the bodies that are not going to be part of your submodel. Uh, and then you create the name selection in the same way you did in the global model. So we 
just make, again, just make the same name selection that you made. Make sure it's on the same geometry. You want to make sure it's on the same, you know, faces or bodies or wherever uh, that you made this name selection in your global model. Uh, and then again, do the same thing with the name selections manager. Um, select that name selection and then give it a user ID. Uh, just to, to keep things more straightforward, I give it the same user ID as I did in the global model. Um, this especially makes it nice if you have multiple submodels from a single global model. You can just say, you know, keep the same user ID for each submodel. So one and one, two and two, et cetera, however many submodels you want uh, from your global model. Uh, and then finally, you create another keyword snippet. Uh, again, just a simple quick snippet, um, two keywords. First one being interface linking segment. And this is where you specify the two user IDs for your named selections. So again, I gave each name selection a one, both in the global model and a number one in the submodel here. Um, and that's why it's easier. You can just keep track one to one. And again, if you have a second submodel, you would name that two in your global model and then name it, give it the user ID of two in your submodel here as well. And then the second uh, keyword is interface linking file. And this is just the exact same file that you wrote out in the global model. Just type in it exactly the exact same way so that it links to that same file. And again, uh, that file is where the displacements are stored during the global model. And that, that what you're doing here is you're now importing them into your submodel. Uh, and then you're ready to solve the submodel. Um, no other boundary conditions uh, are necessary um, for the submodel because again, all those boundary conditions are held and stored in this uh, linking file that links your global model to the submodel. So looking at my example, uh, I did obviously I refined the mesh. I initially had 63 nodes in the global model mesh, which as you can see is pretty coarse. And then I refined it to and I very fine to 572 uh, nodes in my submodel. The, this caused the uh, maximum equivalent stress to go from 65 to 96. So about a 50% increase. Um, so, so you, and you can definitely expect some similar results if you, if you, depending on you know, your simulation and how much you refine the mesh. But um, it, is, it is very important to do, especially in an area of high stress, um, to try to refine the mesh in that area to make sure you're resolving that stress um, correctly. So that's it for the brief overview on battery pack drop tests. Uh, once again, I work for Ozen Engineering. We use physics-based simulation to solve multidisciplinary engineering problems. We specialize in FEA, CFD, and high and low frequency electromagnetics. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about our company, uh, learn some more about some ANSA software or our consulting services, you can email us at info at call our office phone number, or visit our website at www.ozeninc.com.